to the Fairmont Chamber of Commerce Business Spotlight, where we introduce local businesses to the community and the world at large with social media. Hi, my name is Alan Cohen. I'm on the board of directors for the Fairlawn Chamber of Commerce, and it is my pleasure to do these interviews with these great people. Today's guest is Pat Saparito. She's a certified mentor and outreach chair for the organization SCORE. I'd like to introduce Pat to you right now. Hi, Pat. How are you today? Hey, Ellen. Doing great. Thanks for inviting me. Oh, it's my pleasure. You do so many wonderful things with this organization called SCORE. Could you tell us uh, about SCORE and what it's all about? Absolutely. Um, SCORE is a um, national nonprofit. Uh, we are funded partially or largely, frankly, by the, the SBA, and we provide free confidential mentoring to small businesses. Um, I'm with the Northeast New Jersey chapter, and we serve primarily uh, Passaic and Bergen County small businesses. That's great. Uh, how long have you been with the organization? Uh, just, uh, it was last year. It's just, it's been just over a year. And I joined just before the pandemic. Uh, we had one in-person meeting. And uh, since then, we've all been operating virtually. So via Zoom and other teleconferencing. Great. So what made you join SCORE as a, as a mentor, especially? Mm -hmm. Well, I've been a consultant for most of my career. And uh, I've also been a small business owner. Um, I wanted to give back to the community. And um, maybe about a year, about 18 months before I joined SCORE, I left corporate, the corporate world, the big, I would say the large corporate world. I'd worked for um, SAP, the big German software company. Uh, and uh, I, was, I wanted to still stay engaged and use my skills. And uh, I started looking around for organizations, and I thought uh, SCORE had a really a valuable val a, a value proposition, as I said, to the community in particular. Right. So you wanted to give back. So you've been in the corporate world that long. And, and I guess later in your career, you decided it is good to give back. And, and I find that with all the people that I spoke to about SCORE is they're towards the end of their careers or past their careers. And now it is giving back to the community and other small businesses as well. Uh Absolutely. And of course, when I traveled, when I should say when I was with the cor in the corporate world, I traveled constantly. So for me to commit to do something with SCORE, at least or for any organization on a regular basis, on a committed basis, um, I didn't feel that I could do that. Um, since I've joined SCORE, I found that there are lots of ways for people to participate. And I didn't mean to be um, reticent about, um, about being uh, a volunteer for SCORE. So I happen to be a mentor, but we'll talk. We can talk later. We can talk now. Uh, there's various roles that people can play that have more or less involvement. Um, so whether you uh, want to give, you know, consider it to be a part-time job and a commitment every week, or whether, frankly, you have an hour or two a month, there, there is a role for you at SCORE. That's great. So, yeah, tell us about the different positions. So uh, what does an actual mentor do? Right. Well, a, a mentor is essentially a coach. Um, we're assigned a, cl a client and multiple clients, generally speaking. Um, we do an intake interview, try to understand what the goal of that um, person is in their business. And, and generally, it's either a startup or they're looking for some way to grow their business. And we've had clients, frankly, who are looking to sell or to retire their business. Um, so you know, people have different goals, right? And they may have shorter or long-term goals. Uh, and the mentor, think of them as a quarterback. They really see the relationship with the client from start to end. And we, uh, we aspire to have a long-term relationship, but, you know, the client's always in the, the driver's seat on that. Um, but there's other roles. So no one person knows everything. My background is data and analytics. I have a strong marketing background. Finance, not so much. <laughs> so we have all kinds of other uh, mentors that have um, have various specialties and, and skills. And uh, so we call those subject matter experts. 
and we can bring them in on a particular topic. So if a customer that is trying to take a look at their financials, maybe get a small business loan, whatever it might be, uh, you know, I can bring in that finance person or someone else. So, um, so those people don't have, I would say, the administrative overload that maybe a mentor mentor does, and I shouldn't say overload or over um, oversight, if you will. Um, and uh, then uh, there's a couple of other roles. One of them is uh, conducting workshops. You may think you only have an hour or two a month. Maybe you just want to do a workshop. And, you know, we'd be grateful to have, you know, have that as well. And then for other people, um, we have administrative positions. And I don't mean clerical positions. Uh, we have a woman who has HR background. And she helps us uh, with intake for new uh, new members and men, um, uh, reviewing their applications and getting them um, uh, settled, et cetera. So that's one example of uh, an administrative role that could be played. That's terrific. So you can really help out a small business, really understand that business better than what they're doing now. So it... Yeah. Uh, you want to follow on that? Sure. Uh, yeah, absolutely. It's not only understand their business, but you know, you've been a small business owner, I know, Alan. Uh, and so, uh, and I have been as well. And, and uh, so this is not my first, uh, you know, like, um, rodeo. And I guess what I didn't talk about is that I still am a small business. I'm a small business owner myself, but this isn't my first rodeo. Um, so I do, I have a data and analytics consulting um, business um, I've written a book um, on data and analytics, and I do consulting around that. Uh, so, um, so uh, going back to a um, uh, little bit about helping small businesses, you know, I wish that when I started out, and so when I was about forty, and I'm much beyond forty now. Um, when I was uh, about forty, I started out and I had a market research um, business, uh, consulting business. And I wish I'd had somebody, I wish I had gone and reached out to SCORE to have somebody help me understand how to go about, you know, starting that up, how to do the networking, how to take a look at the financials, et cetera. So, um, so whether you're a startup or whether you have a business that you're just looking to rethink, you know, there's great value to a small business owner. Yeah, that's terrific. Uh, you did mention that I'm a small business too. And there are two ways to get into business. One is you jump into business and that's how you learn business or the other way is you get an education in or a masses in business. And, and, uh, Earlier in my career, I worked with my wife, Evelyn, and we uh, had a record label and publishing company. Mm -hmm. And we really did business by just doing business. Mm -hmm. And uh, we did well. I, I had a lot of success. But as we got more developed and a little bit older in life, I realized I was missing something about understanding the basic of business. Mm -hmm. So not just my business of the record label, just understanding, you know, we do, of course we did marketing, but when you study marketing, just understand more about it. And then this was just bringing me to this level. Uh, years back, we did have a, a gentleman from the SBA and SCORE start working with us. And what he was able to do in such a short period of time was really help us well, I said it before, understand our business better about marketing plans, about mm -hmm. the finances and all that. And it was a terrific help and it really helped us change the way we did business. So mm -hmm. I, I want to say I'm, I really enjoyed working with SCORE at the time itself. And it really was a, a value to our company and not really as a startup as much later. Right. So you mentioned that you could be a startup company, you could be more developed, and but you still might need, you know, a mentor from from mm -hmm. school to help you out. Right, right. Well, that's, I'm glad you had a satisfactory experience. It's great. Yeah, and uh, uh, it was great. Um, so, uh, about how many people are you mentoring at this time? Uh, I have a prax. I would say approximately twelve to fifteen. Uh, and they run the gamut, you know, some of them are, are really green, you know, startups. I have, I'll just, I'll, I'll share some of those because I think it, maybe it'll be uh, helpful to, you know, Fairlawn Chamber members. 
Um, so one lady has a, she has a, um, uh, a product for curly hair, for multicultural curly hair. And she literally, her brother is a chemist. He's um, actually developed the formula. Um, it's all natural. She developed it because her child had very sensitive skin and hair, but she also had extremely curly and hard to manage hair. I, uh, so anyway, so she's at, she's at a startup, and we've gone from right from, she, she knew what she wanted to do from a formula and everything, but going through producers, helping her think up her branding. Um, she's now in her label design and manufacturing. Um, uh, we looked at copyright and trademark. I mean, it's been, and obviously I'm not an expert in those things, but we brought in again, some of our ex experts in, um, and we don't give legal advice, but again, it's guidance, right? So where can you find that information, helping people think through some of the questions they should ask themselves? So that's one lady. Um, I have another one. I'll just give another example of a startup, slightly different. So that's a product. I have somebody else who had a service, um, a young woman who is, she's a guidance counselor and she's much more than that uh, in uh, South Jersey. So I said, we are normally, you know, Passaic and wherever, uh, Passaic and Bergen County. Um, she's actually from Monmouth County. Um, her, uh, what she's looking to do is to, um, to go solo, right? She wants to leave being a, um, being part of the school system and start up her own, uh, counseling, um, practice for youths. Uh, and they're again, multicultural kind of views, the diverse that, that are dealing with various issues and, and primarily psychological. Um, so it's, uh, and for the families of those children as well. So she's at a place where she certainly has the skills and all of her certifications she needs in. So she needs help just thinking through how does she start that up? How does she market it? Right. Um, how does she ramp it up to not just if she might have it as a side gig? And then how does she actually, you know, get from, you know, a startup to becoming, a, you know, this is her real full time job and revenue base. Um, so those are startups. Then I have existing businesses. Uh, I have a lady, again, I'm going to give an example. She's in like Minnesota and she has a business that's closed captioning. Um, so, and talk about, you know, uh, very interesting. Initially, I think she wanted help with marketing. And then I'm kind of laughing because, you know, be careful what you wish for. With all of the webinars going on, she has more business than she can possibly handle. So now she's trying to think about how does she find someone to work with her in the business as an assistant that she can actually ultimately bring into the business? So we worked up a job description, right? What is that job? How does she find that kind of person? Um, but um, but we, we, and we did work on some other you know, marketing aspects that she was looking at, how to better message her services uh, a bit more clearly. And also looking at her, her website, um, she's obviously dealing with hearing impaired people with closed captioning. One of the things that she needed to look at is at her website. Her website needs to be ADA, you know, compliant, right? So those, it, that was very interesting stuff to talk about. So, yeah, really, uh, that's that's a uh, a very diverse clientele that you're working with. Mm -hmm. You find, uh, no matter what, like I said, it's diverse. No matter which company, there are still the same issues at hand. Like you said, marketing, the finances. So business is business. It doesn't matter what business you're in. And that's yeah. where your expertise could help guide them. Right. And, and, you know, and no one knows everything. I don't know everything as a mentor. Right. But I, hopefully what I've got is the, you know, the process and the guidance to be able to find to number one, help people explore asking intelligent questions. Hopefully they're intelligent questions so that people can sort of think through, um, you know, as I said, sometimes they come to you and they think people, clients think that this is, they want to achieve A. And as you start to have a conversation, explore that with them, they re may realize, you know, that's a symptom of something else, right? So you're trying to get to what's really maybe the core issue that they want to or should look at. Um, so it's, in, it's kind of intelligent questioning and guidance is a good part, you know, of what a, what a good mentor does, holds you accountable, frankly, that you have a commitment, if you have a goal, that you have a commitment um, and staying on target toward that goal. And your goal can change, and that's perfectly fine. 
um, you know, and then adjusting with them, you know, uh, and your business is adapting, right? We, God knows things are extremely dynamic right today and in, in, uh, in this environment. So, yeah, that's great. I, I noticed a couple of the, the main uh, things that our mentor mentioned was, of course, first, we'll talk about our mission statement. Our, oh, yes. You just mentioned our goals, mm-hmm. business plan. And I always said back to him, I was kind of cocky, but oh, business plan, I'm in business. Huh? What kind of plan do I need? I'm doing it. And then he, <laughs> then he you know, kind of put us back on track. He said, let's focus on really what your business plan is. Right. You could steer that train a little bit better. So it seemed like a lot of the same mission, vision, goals, planning came into play, whether, and he had nothing to do with the music business at the time. Right. I, I think yeah. that's really what helped us. Yeah, as I said, it's asking sort of asking those questions. And as you say, some of it, and I think the tools have gotten better, Alan. So I think that, for example, for a startup, asking them to do a business plan is very overwhelming. Um, and even if they haven't started up, frankly, they may not have really thought through their idea very well. It really may not be the business for them uh, or a viable business. Um, so we, we we use one of the tools we use, I, I call it almost like it's like a mini business plan. It's a framework that helps them at least get their thoughts on paper and then really rethink it before you go to start, you know, investing time or quitting your day job, God forbid, right? Uh, if you're not really ready to go there. So um, and then on the on the other hand, I've, I've had again, I can go back to a client I have that um, she's in she's been in business. She's been fairly successful. Um, she was impacted a bit by, um, you know, she probably lost maybe about a third of her revenue uh, because of covid. And she's in the um, organizing business, I would say. Um, I don't want to say she's a certified professional organizer, but she does more than just organizing, coming in and organizing your cupboards or something, right? Um, she can help you organize your home, whether it's for sale, whether, frankly, you're, uh, uh, you want to organize your existing home, right? Or, or she does uh, commercial properties for small businesses. You know, it's about working efficiently, maybe a great job position for her right now. Is helping people organize their home offices for people that are going to be doing that kind of on a go forward basis. Um, but which her job is extremely physical. And so what she came to score for is she wanted to rethink what's her career transition longer term, right? She's in her mid 50s. Um, it, maybe she can do this until she's 70. And she has a crew. It's not that she physically has to do all this herself. But so we had some discussions about, well, what would that look like, you know, and what's really your goal, right? Um, And then thinking about how can you work toward that both in the short term and the longer term. So, you know, as you say, it's not just about your your formal business plan per se, right? Uh, It's it's about how is your business evolving? How do you reimagine or um, in some cases, you know, your business either by um, being forced into it by an environment today or by volition that you really want to change your business for some reason, your life circumstances change. That's terrific. Now you mentioned COVID. Of course, I was going to bring that up because obviously that's on everybody's mind. And (laughs) since you are working, uh, you know, in the forefront with, with these businesses, have you seen them, uh, these businesses changing and evolving because of this obviously the way we're meeting today on zoom i know i changed my business dramatically and mm-hmm. frankly that's how these interviews came about right, right. So in that way my networking has really broadened tremendously right that's why i do the interviews i'm speaking mm-hmm. with you I'm speaking to every other business in our neighborhood so right. how have you seen these small businesses evolved during this, you know, unprecedented times? Right. Well, they've, um, it, they've, it varies, right? Some of them have thought about, do they have new products and services, right, that they could deliver? Can they, A, number one, deliver their existing products and services in a different way? And how do they need to get more comfortable? I mean, at the end of the day, it's always about the customer, right? So some of it is, are you going, are you going after, quote unquote, the right customer or a customer that can, you know, 
receive your services in that way? Or do you need to, you know, uh, change your services, right? Um, so um, let me try and give you another example. There's a, a, they were a relative startup. They're an educational services company. And their, um, their business, but these two ladies were very experienced. They worked for a firm before. Uh, both have worked together at a, an, an existing firm doing educational services. Um, they formed, God help them again, they started, you know, just before they launched their business just before uh, COVID. Um, and they got hit with a double whammy, right? So um, their business was very much tied to corporate relocations. So number one, corporations are not relocating. They don't, you know, obviously, you know, everybody's kind of stayed in place. You couldn't relocate people if you wanted to. Um, and then their second uh, challenge was that a big source of referrals for their business um, were from a, 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 not just the employers themselves, but a relocation services company that didn't provide the educational services. These people provided them for them as one of the banner of services they offered. That company decided to go into, into the educational services business, Right. So they had to think about how could they differentiate without, you know, cutting off, you know, their their source or be cut off. How could they specialize to do things within that market, even for this company that the company couldn't easily do themselves? So they repositioned their services, but they also, and of course, the logical thing was they went after the individual market, after the individual um, consumers versus the corporations to look at, especially pandemic pods. Everybody's struggling with. Um, you know, the dual, you know, online and in person, or maybe homeschooling, uh, you know, during during this period. Um, and then we brainstormed and came up with um, how could we actually get back to those corporations, maybe without the relocation company, and get them to position educational services as an employee benefit, because so many corporations were losing in particular female um, employees, because you know, I'm not saying that men aren't doing, doing their share at all or aren't being impacted, but you know, women were um, basically leaving the corporate world. And so there was a real attrition problem for employers. Uh, so we're going back to thinking, how can we position their educational services from an employee benefits perspective and perhaps get a paid, not maybe um, a voluntary employee benefit, which means that the corporation does not need to pay for it, the individual can, but maybe the corporation would come up with some kind of um, incentive, maybe based on less days um, um, of absence or some other, you know, thinking those through, right? Offering discounts. So, um, So their business was going through major change from what they thought it would be. I mean, they still are providing the services it's how are they positioning them and who are they positioning them to and what incentives can they come up with, right, to, uh, to continue to deliver them. So. That's uh, terrific. I, I, I find uh, with business, one of the main things that I, I express to my students and, and other people is being able to be flexible and to be able to turn on a dime. Yeah. <laughs> agility. It's all about agility, right? What do you mean and adaptability. Agility? happened and we all got shocked we all you know got hit back and then it's those that said well uh, what am i going to do to stay above water i right. know uh, statistically uh, at least 30 percent or more small businesses have gone out of business and even right. obviously the larger ones we know yeah. larger ones and uh, unfortunately for whatever the reason, maybe their particular business, they were not able to readapt to what right. I mean, this is bigger than anybody thought. But right. like you mentioned, and what I said, there are ways to adapt to even something like this. Right. Or, Absolutely. Uh, another thing, I, I mean, I, I put together a thing called the business continuity plan. Mm-hmm. And I did a seminar on that and, and a presentation mm-hmm. because it, it finally affected me uh, or hit me that, yes, are you prepared for a situation like that? And I think that's very good to, to uh, you know, to show to small businesses. Are you prepared? What happens 
in a pandemic? Yeah. What happens in a, in a flood? Do you have the right insurances? Do you have the right people that you could call on? Where are all your documents? Is everything backed up in case you're a cyber yeah. attack and all that? So I think businesses, of course, large businesses probably have them, but mm -hmm. A lot of small businesses, that's another thing that a mentor could say to them, do you have a business continuity plan? In effect, if this happens, what will you do? And I think those that are flexible enough and learn from that, you know, have a little bit stronger way of recovering faster, analyzing the recovery and what went wrong and being able to go on and do that every year, reanalyze yeah. the company every year. Yeah. I, I would argue you should actually revisit your business plan every year as well. I mean, you don't have to rewrite the plan, but does it still hold up? And, and maybe that's almost, you know, in conjunction with your business con continuity plan, right? You know, how is the mar how is your market changed? How buyers, you know, uh, take a look at it. all these changes that have happened. Things are not going to go back to the world as it was, you know, March and March of last year, right? Um, so as you say, the interaction, um, you know, what people prefer, you know, their, how they prefer to have services delivered, et cetera. I mean, we, we are struggling with this at SCORE. Um, a lot of our mentors were, you know, everything was delivered in person. And it took a little while for some of our mentors to, to adjust to doing things virtually, to get used to the technology. You know, they were used to the phone and talking to people in person. Um, so... Um, so, you know, it's, like you say, it's adjustment, even for, you know, even for score, you know, so. Um, really great advice. Uh, tell us a little bit about the other positions. I, I know you could also be a, a score presenter where you may be just doing seminars and stuff like that. So what other mm -hmm. opportunities are there for somebody to get involved? Yes, well, um, I think I started to mention earlier, there's a subject matter expert. Um, so if you're an attorney or you're an accountant, um, uh, if you're, I, I have one lady who's really interesting. We, one of the things we've been trying to work on is the Hispanic community, serving the Hispanic community. Um, so uh, I'll give you an example, one of my volunteers um, she's bilingual, she's a single mom, um, she's got a full-time job, so she's a busy lady. Um, but what she's offered to do is that so we've taken some of our presentations, our most popular presentations, and she's helping to interpret them. Uh, she's doing something for us in terms of we've changed our newsletter so that at the, uh, in our newsletter, you will see at the end of the newsletter, the workshops that are available in Spanish for the next month. So the, we don't want to turn off the English speaking audience, but we want to we make sure that the Latin Hispanic audience um, so at the top of our newsletter, you'll see kind of a little headline in Spanish that says read at the bottom for Spanish, you know, <laughs> look at the bottom for Spanish uh, workshops, right? So she's, uh, she's actually, you know, pulling that information together for the workshop. And what's really great is that we're leveraging that across all of our chapters. So it's not just, you know, the, our Northeast New Jersey chapter. Um, uh, another lady, um, who and she's acting as a subject matter expert. She also happens to be uh, a Latina. Um, she, I've had her on a call this week. I have a, another lady who's launching a uh, client is launching a beauty brand, um, for multicultural and she's taking cultural, um, slices one at a time. So she was looking at the Afro-American black slash Afro-American market, um, that's her heritage, and she's pretty comfortable with that. But she was also trying to evaluate how how is it different for the Latin and Hispanic market, because that's not her heritage. And so I was able to bring in um, the, this uh, other mentor who, A, that's great because it's her, her background, um, um, but also she's been a brand manager for like a major, you know, Fortune 500 corporation for the Hispanic market, right? Um, and also, um, she has been in the export import business and has worked for embassies. So she had incredible recommendations about how to think about bringing in um, products from overseas into the U.S. market and how this woman could, um, could partner and do that. 
So, you know, so there's just a couple of, you know, examples of, um, uh, of roles. And then the workshop presenters, I'm sorry, I'm wiggling, <laughs> um, uh, talking about, you know, the workshops that could re be presented. And Alan, I understand that you might be presenting some workshops for SCORE. Well, I, I did, uh, to be honest with you, like I said, I had experience with SCORE before. I worked with the SB. Uh, a before actually in 2001 we were the SBDC small business uh, uh, number one company. In wow! I do, I do have my award with me. I have a my statue. I don't have a Grammy yet, but I have that statue. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yes, actually, because you spoke at the uh, the Rotary, which I'm a member of the Rotary, uh, that just sparked something. I tried to network. So I did reach out to you. And then uh, they reached back to me. I uh, immediately signed online. I got mm -hmm. some response, some of your recruiters, and they hooked me up with uh, Kurt Springstead. And uh, we decided that for me to be a mentor, because I am too busy, I'm, I'm not fully retired. I run my, still my record company. I own um, Living Great Real Estate. That's my uh, real estate company. It's about three years old. So I might need a mentor for that. But no, actually, we're doing pretty well. And thank God we were able to get through this pandemic because, uh, you know, people are still buying and selling. We had a, a, a period stopping so i diversified into that with my wife and i'm also a professor at the college at william patterson so there's a lot but i like giving back as well so i said and of course my wife said how are you going to do more volunteer work you with the chair i said well and then i when i spoke to kurt i didn't know about the um being a presenter and that seemed like more fit for me because I'm more, I, I could really present on marketing. I could present on trademarks. I could present on uh, really any topic I, I try to talk about. So he said, I think that's it. You could do a couple of year. It won't take a lot. You'll put together a PowerPoint. It'll be easier for you and less time consuming than working one-on-one. -on -one. Not that I mind that, but I think that's too much. So he, in the short period of time, helped me find where my niche might be able to work with SCORE. So I'm proud to say that I will become a SCORE presenter. And and you know what? I always learn about teaching because I, I do teach. Every time I teach, I learn. I agree. I agree. Totally agree. It, totally. You, you just get it. You know, like you said about the business plan, at least put it on paper, because when it's only in your mind, it's only in your mind. When right. you start seeing it on paper, one thing, when I start teaching about a, a, a topic that I don't know about as well, I do tons of research. I formulate it. I package it easily for somebody to understand where I'm coming from. And then we both benefit. Right. Absolutely. Uh, and I learned, you know, as you say, even from whether you're whether you're teaching and I've done a fair amount of teaching myself, um, I do a lot of lecturing and I, I prepare um, workshops uh, for, uh, you know, in various forums, obviously, you know, not just about score, but about particular topics, right? Social media, uh, insurance, <laughs> you mentioned earlier, the continuity plan and about insurance. Insurance is my background. I'm a chartered property casualty underwriter. Um, so, um, uh, but, um, but also what's interesting to me is, you know, I worked with all of these businesses, you know, and I like said, I'm an expert in insurance, uh, and risk management and a very, fairly deep background in healthcare as well. Uh, uh, and when I worked for, um, SAP, I literally worked with every, every business I worked globally and when I say every business, I work with the food industry, I work with manufacturing, I work with the airlines, uh, uh, you know, governmental agencies, you know, um, and so, you know, the federal level, state level, county. Um, so, um, but what's, uh, what I found is the things that I, when I'm working with all these various clients, I've learned a lot about, for example, I hadn't worked with nonprofits. I learned a lot about nonprofits. I learned, um, uh, a lot about, um, you know, I, I didn't know what about, you know, closed captioning services. It's pretty interesting. I'm working with a guy who's an inventor. He's developed an appliance for, um, disabled people. 
Um, he's in the process of, uh, he's, he's filed a patent already. He's in the process of, you know, coming up with manufacturing now the, you know, the product itself. But that's a whole fascinating thing. And it's IoT enabled. You know, he wanted to work with me. He found me. And by the way, if people are looking for a mentor, they can search for specific skills and they can request a specific mentor um, from, uh, from SCORE, having the skills that they're looking for, skills and experience. Um, so anyway, so but the, my, I'm, my point going back to is that I've learned as much and gotten much as much back as I've given. And um, that's why I you know, continue to do it and why I'm so passionate about, you know, putting the word out there and about outreach. That's terrific. I want to thank you, Pat, for sitting down with us and telling us your story and how you are volunteering and how you are involved. You are a value to SCORE itself. I'm, you know, I'm Thanks. sure they're happy to have you there uh, mentoring and outreaching to get other people, but you're also a tremendous value to the people that you're mentoring. And I hope so shows by your you know enthusiasm for this and it's really remarkable so i'd like to say it's it's really been a pleasure to speak to you today same here thank you for the opportunity my pleasure so i'd like to thank once again pat saparito who is a certified mentor and outreach chair for the organization score if you're a small business and you need some advice you need some help well, you just want to bounce some ideas off of somebody, SCORE is the place to do it. Um, I'm a successful SCORE, uh, uh, not, uh, whatever I was, a uh, uh, business that was mentored by SCORE, and now I'm glad I'm going to be giving back to it. I want to thank Pat again for that. So this has been the Fairlawn Chamber of Commerce Business Spotlight. My name is Alan Cohen on the board of directors for the chamber. And it's been my pleasure to speak with Pat Saparito today. Thank you everyone and still be safe.